Well, Rube, that one was ugly. That was an ugly game. It was ugly, but it was a lot of self-inflicted ugliness. I mean, the Cowboys did some good things, but um, the Eagles were coached poorly, played poorly, and really responsible for that game getting away from them. Yeah, uh, final score, 41-21. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast brought to you by Nissan with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. We have a lot to get to. We want to talk about the offense and Jalen Hurts struggles. We want to talk about the defense giving up 41 points, uh, another big injury to the offensive line, and, of course, the return of a highly anticipated return of Dave's positivity corner. The defense gave up 34 points. Can't put it all on them. That's true. That is true. Jalen Hurts gave up the others. Uh, well, let's start off with the overall thoughts. I mean, this was a tough game. We knew this was a tough game. But to see the Eagles play as poorly as they did, I mean, I don't want to say I was shocked, but it, it it's not a good sign going forward because they have some really tough games coming up. And all of a sudden, you look at the schedule – and it could get ugly here pretty quick. Yeah, and I don't even know if it matters who they play because if they play like this, they're not going to beat anybody. And so whether it's the Chiefs or Buccaneers or whether it's the Giants or the Jets, they, well, maybe the Jets they, they would be. <laughs> I think they'd still be the Jets, yeah. But, you know, the thing that's alarming to me is the regression from week one to week two and then from week two to week three. I mean, we talked so much in the offseason about looking for growth. You know, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. They're probably not going to the playoffs this year. But you want to see progress. You want to see growth. You want to see young players developing. And it's going the other way. They start out with this dominating win in Atlanta. And I, I get that the Falcons aren't a great team. But the Eagles played really well. And then the 49ers game did some good things, some bad things. And then this was a complete – franchise-wide meltdown. I mean, this was embarrassing um, in so many ways. And um, that's the alarming thing to me is that it's getting worse when it's supposed to be getting better. Yeah, I mean, that's totally fair. The first game, you're, you're looking at the offense and the defense. You're like, they have a plan. They're executing the plan. They have some young, talented players who are making things happen. Even the 49ers game, that was a game uh, – I think they should have won that game. And, and honestly, that loss becomes even worse – now that you're starting this this tough stretch. But, yeah, in this game it was – I mean, oh no, it was a team loss. It was it was offense, defense. Um, I guess special teams was okay. But the coaching wasn't great. You're right, the self-inflicted no, stuff, the, the penalties. Stopped. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, the, the self-inflicted stuff, that's insane. The penalties this team's had through three games. We're going to get to the penalties in a minute, but um, yeah, you, you're right. And, and the coaching, from the standpoint of they, they had such a good plan in that first game, and you're like, all right, like this is it was fresh, and it it was it looked like they had a, a clear objective in mind. I don't know what the objective was tonight because whatever it was, they didn't do it. Yeah, and how, how do your running backs have two carries in a football game? I mean, I, I mean, it's just mind blowing. I went back and I ran out of time, but I was looking to find the last time that happened. And I'm back in the early sixties and I haven't found it and I can't go beyond 50, but you know, that in the, in the forties, nobody was throwing the ball 70 times and running at once. So I'm guessing it's the first time in franchise history, running backs have had two carries. Maybe there's a game. I, I, who knows? But and the, the bottom line is Miles Sanders is one of your best weapons, and you don't even think to have the – he had five touches for 55 yards, but he was such a small part of the game plan. Um, I'm really starting to wonder, look, it's three games, and you don't want to get too carried away and make broad generalizations, but watching that game, I started thinking somebody else got to call the plays for this team because Nick is terrible at it. And you give him a couple more games before you start – you know, really making that case, but you know why? I mean, there's no, there, the play calling is brutal. And I thought Doug last year was the worst play calling I've seen in, in a long, long time. This is, this is so much worse. You know, there's no concept. There's no idea. There's no, there's, there's just nothing fits with anything else. 
it's just like these random plays picked out of a out of a hat or something. I, I, I'm so disappointed in Nick Sirianni's play calling because I, I thought from look the people he's been around, the quarterbacks he's been around, and, and coaches, um, and just talking to him over the last six months of the preseason since he got hired, he really seemed to have an idea of what he wanted to do, how he wanted the offense to look. Um, he had a really clear, good idea of, of the way things were going to operate. And it's nothing like that. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, look, it's, it's three games and two of them have been really bad offensively. Uh, but if this continues another couple of weeks, you know, he, he wheeled off all the guys on the, on the staff that have play calling experience from Jim Bob Cooter to Kevin Petulo to Jason Michael and Shane Steichen. I, I mean, I'll give him a couple more weeks, but at some point you got to get somebody, you know, maybe, maybe it'll help him to, to have that, you know, have someone else do that for a while. I don't know, but this was, this was some of the worst play calling I've ever seen because there's just no rhyme or reason to the plays. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. The thing that bothered me was after the game, he basically said that they went into this one thinking we're going to have to score points to keep up with the other offense. And if, if you let that dictate the way you call a game, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to do what you do best. You have to put your players in the situations where they feel comfortable. You, you talked all offseason about building this offense around your players, specifically Jalen Hurts, and then you have them drop back and, and do what they did tonight. I, that doesn't make sense to me. You have to play your game, and you can't be worried about whether or not the Cowboys are going to rattle off 35 or 41 you know, you, you have to – you just have to run your offense. And I don't well, know what, what that is. What about your faith in your defense as well? I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, that's uh, – that that kind of blew my mind here and that. Uh, and then the other part of that is – and this is a little off topic, and, and I know the offense isn't moving the ball, but there were two fourth and fives from inside Dallas territory, and he elected to punt because the chart told him to. But in a game where you already told us – you recognize you're going to have to score points in order to win. Right. Why are you punting the ball? That, I Why think are you letting a chart dictate that? I'd like to know what chart that is. And, and honestly, and I, I would think those are situations a chart would tell you to go for. It. I would think so. He might have Rich Kotite's old chart that got wet <laughs> that time. It yeah. kind of got smudged, and he's using – I think he's using Richie the case. Who took my shot? I left my shot on the desk. Hey, Nick, you got my chart? Who's got my chart? I didn't think we'd get a Kotite impression after that's a... Kind of, that's, I watched this game and I'm thinking, well, yeah, Rich Kotite was actually a much better play caller. They had, the, they had a top five offense in 90 when he was the, he was the play caller for, for Buddy. Yeah. He was Buddy's own coordinator. But that's beside the point. Um, really just disappointing. Um, but not even, like, just baffled. Like, what's he thinking? What's he, you know... I. I, I what was what was he what was he trying to accomplish offensively? Now look, I get that the offensive line I mean, finished with three subs, started with two. We'll talk about Sam Malo a little later, but I, I you know I understand that. But you know I looked up at one point, and I think Kellen Moore is a pretty good play caller, and you know he gets the most out of his talent. I looked up at one point, Dallas had run the ball. Their running backs had run the ball twenty times for one hundred and fifteen yards. And the Eagles running backs had not touched the ball yet or didn't, didn't have a, didn't have a carry. Miles might've had a catch. I think he had a lot, that long catch, but you know, and then, you know, well, you know, the modern NFL, it's not about run pass ratio. Well, look at what the Cowboys do by mixing it up. I'm not saying 50, 50, but you know, you just play in the other team's hands when you, and this is a one possession game for, for quite a while. It was 14, seven, you know, and even when it was 20 to seven, you don't abandon the run then. When it's 20, when it's 27 seven, you want to abandon the run fine. But everything before that, uh, you can be balanced and take some pressure off this, this offensive line with three subs in it and take some pressure off a 23 year old quarterback making a seventh NFL start and um, get a little unpredictable. It, 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 this offense is so predictable, it's stale. Uh, I, it, it just, there's no what happened to all the inventiveness we heard about all the all, all the I, I don't I don't know what it is right now I don't know what this offense is right now but I'm giving them two more games I'm giving them giving them the Chiefs and the Panthers and if they don't get untracked 
somebody else has to call the plays. Yeah, it's very disjointed, and you're right. I mean, and, and you look at this Dallas defensive line, it's not the biggest unit in the world. Even with three subs, you'd think we have a chance to run the ball here, at least give your quarterback a break, because in that, we always talk about complementary football. This was the opposite of that, because your defense was completely gassed because your offense couldn't stay on the field. I mean, your offense is three and out, three and out, punt, 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 punt. And all of a sudden, I looked up at the – the time of possession in the first half and Dallas was on the field like 19 minutes. I mean, that their the Eagles defense was completely gassed out. You have to help them out a little bit. Right. And miles averaged 13 and a half yards a carry. I mean, <laughs> miles must be thinking like when Doug got fired, he's thinking, finally I'll get the football. Like now he's got a guy who gives it to him less than Doug did, which I didn't think was like humanly possible. So, yeah. Well, let's talk. So let, let's talk about Jalen Hurts, though, because he was uh, really hard on himself. Put the loss on him. He said, "This one's on me." Uh, he said, "Play calling wasn't the issue in this game. I was the issue in this game, and he wasn't the only issue in this game." I, I think it's it's valiant of him to put it on himself, but he didn't play well. He didn't, he didn't play, play well, well at all. And, and the issues with his accuracy that we've been talking about for a year now showed up in this game. There were a lot of throws in this game that he makes good throws on them. It's a lot different. Uh, he missed Goddard for what would have been a big game. He obviously underthrew Rager um, for the first interception. Second interception, Devontae fell down, but I think we both agreed uh, it would have been a pick six either way. At least it would have been a pick. Maybe if he hadn't fallen down, he might have been able to catch Jostles him. Jostles him a little bit. Digs or maybe like he trips his legs up or something. Yeah, but it's probably still was, a pick. I had nothing yet. So, um, I mean, those were, those were bad throws. Uh, he just – you know, you see these bad habits he gets to. He rolls it. You know, he rolls to his right all the time. Um, he did at least hit a couple of things in the middle of the field, um, but he's you know he's looking at one guy and then taking off. And uh, when he did take off, for the most part uh, today, the the Cowboys were ready for it and um, they they handled it. He you know he he averaged under four yards a carry, which is uh, you know that's a win for the Cowboys. So. Um, you know, and he got sacked on fourth down. It was just, um, but you know, you, you still see flashes where he makes some incredible throws and does some incredible things. I mean, his wow. touchdown throw is about as good a throw as you're going to see. It came late in the game; it didn't really matter. But he had the, the talent shows up in flashes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I think, I tweeted it out. I was like, he, if he could make the routine plays, like he's making wow plays, but he's not making all the routine plays that are there for him to make. Um, you know, you got to do both, but I mean, he's, there's just routine plays. He's just missing guys. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's concerning and yeah. uh, it, it's two games, but um, you know, we talked about this so much. You just want to see improvement week to week. I thought both interceptions were um, inexcusable. I mean, really. And um, they, it wasn't all his fault. No, I don't think Nick did him any favors. And we talked about that. There were a couple drops, not not a whole lot, but um, it, he was he just wasn't good, and he was he was worse than he was last week, and he wasn't great last week. It wasn't terrible, uh, but he's he's going the wrong direction, and that's that's really concerning. Yeah, I know the O line is. This is a bad defense, Dave. It is, and I know the O line is banged up, but man, he he was he was fleeing the pocket early. It didn't seem like he had good pocket awareness in this game. It, it didn't seem like he knew when to step up, when to when to leave the pocket, when to throw. I mean, I'm, the, the decision-making, the timing was all off tonight. And, and, look, I get that the offensive line at one point is now missing three starters, but you still have to trust the guys that are there and, and play your game. And, and I don't think he did that. And the problem is in this game, when you take off and you try to get to the edge, you got some linebackers who are faster than you. I mean, you just do. Michael Parsons and Jalen Smith are going to beat you there. So uh, I, I think that, you know, if you're playing a different team, then maybe there's a few of those plays where he does get the edge and he, he makes a, a big play and you kind of forget about the poor decision making that led to to the escape in the first place. But in this one, it's like highlighted by the fact that these linebackers are chasing him down and and, and against a different team that, that you would have gotten like a, a 12 yard gain. Now, all of a sudden, it's a one yard gain. and You're in second and nine I, those are differences that that show up in this game more than others yeah no, absolutely right and i thought in the first two games he ran at the right time uh he ran when it was the right thing to do for the most part 
Um, not tonight. I, I thought tonight he uh, disjointed is a good word that you used. He, he just looked, um, there were times where he just ran just because I, I don't think he knew what else to do, uh, but there were guys open and uh, he just either didn't see him or did, didn't want to unload. I, I think he's got a, um, he's got some work to do. And, but I still, I, bl I still blame Nick more than Jalen. I really do because it's so hard to evaluate a quarterback when the, the pass run ratio is 40 to two. Yeah. 40 to two. If you include his runs as their pass calls their pass plays and, and sacks as pass plays, their pass rate run ratio is 40 to two. I mean, 40 to two, Dave, that's impossible. That's like, I, I mean, Doug is like, man, this guy just doesn't like to run the ball. Like, so uh, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's hard to come down too hard on Jalen just because I think his play caller and his head coach, you know, he was a train wreck tonight. Terrible. Yeah, I agree. But I also think Jalen played a pretty poor game. No, I agree with that. I agree with yeah. that. I just don't think he got any help from his coach. Yeah, that's fair. It doesn't absolve him, but it, you're right. Yeah. Hey, score big with the AAA Eagles MVP membership, along with superb roadside assistance and discounts you've come to expect from AAA. Get exclusive Eagles-related perks. For all the details, visit AAA.com slash Eagles. For the last three times the Eagles have played in this stadium, 37 points, 37 points, 41 points. Not all 41, like you mentioned, from the defense, but uh, not their best performance either. No, and they, you know, they got gashed early. Um, like I thought Kellen Moore did a great job establishing both Pollard and, and Zeke. That's the best Zeke's looked in like three years. I mean, he looked like the Zeke of like 2016. I mean, he was, you know, he, he just looked really um, quick and powerful, all the stuff he has it. And, you know, with the two of them, I mean, with no BG, they really miss BG in the run game. He's a really good run defender. Um, the, I thought the linebackers had a, had a really, really bad game. Um, How shocking was that, watching the Cowboys linebackers and then watching the Eagles linebackers in this game? Just the difference in talent. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Singleton came back to earth a little bit today. He, he did not have a great game. Um, but, yeah, the, the different – yeah, that's absolutely true. The Cowboys have always had good linebackers uh, recently. So, yeah, I mean, they, they really – I mean, let's face it, the game was the first half, you know, and then they just kind of coasted um, the rest of the way. Um, they um, they gashed. I mean, they just got – I thought up front, the, the Cowboys' old line just, you know, washed out the Eagles' D-line. I mean, the D-line at least did a few good things here or there. They had the the – the one sack for Hargrave played well. We'll get to him in, in the positive. I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans there, but uh, he, he still played don't give well. Away the positivity corner. I know. Oh. Uh, Josh Sweat had a few nice snaps, but yeah, overall they didn't do enough. But then again, they were on the field for <laughs> most of the night. That didn't help on a, a hot night with the roof open. Um, yeah, but the the one defensive sequence that shocked me after a penalty. The Cowboys had first and goal from the 19, and they scored on three plays like it was the easiest thing in the world. First and goal from the 19 should not be that easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, people don't like to hear it, but Dex is really good. He's really good. He's, Very good. Um, he's, he's smart. He doesn't beat himself. He doesn't make mistakes. Um, he's just solid. He doesn't make poor decisions for the most part. They had a couple picks, I think, against – uh, Tampa, but um, you know you have you have a a smart, efficient quarterback and two running backs that can run the ball. You know it's it, it, it's it's tough. And uh, I thought the defense made a couple adjustments in the second half, but by then the Cowboys kind of called off the dogs. They were just kind of riding it out, letting you know letting the clock go down to zero. Um, but it was just. Dalton okay. Schultz had six for 80, two touchdowns. Yeah, that's – yeah, that shouldn't happen. I mean, Kayvon got hurt early. Um, Epps had a tough time a little bit there. But, I mean, I, I can't I can't put on any one person, really. Other than Hargrave, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone, anyone else on the defense gets a passing grade for me today. I mean – I guess Sweat Sweat had a couple of pressures. I think he had a sack. I think he had his first sack, which is mm -hmm. the first sack by an Eagles edge rusher this year. 
half a sack, I think, they gave him. Oh, who do they – Avante. The who was it? Avante. Avante on a, on a blitz. Avante. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it, it was uh, it was front to back, top to bottom. They, um, they didn't cover. They didn't pressure. They didn't tackle. 34 points. Yeah. Not great. 35. Uh, yeah. Well, missed the extra point. I guess that would go on the def- – yeah, even though it's a special teams play, it goes on <laughs> yeah. which touchdown that was. But anyway, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you make of these penalties? Uh, Eagles lead the league in penalties. They just – yeah. They have 35. Right. I think second most is 20, 26. 27. 26 or 27? 27. It's 27, I think, yeah. I think it's Tampa. Mm-hmm. They, they actually had the lead – the league lead in the first quarter. So they played two and a quarter games – the rest mm-hmm. of the league played three games, and they already had more penalties than any other team. And now they have 35, which is the 13th most in NFL history through three three games. And it's the most by an Eagles team. The previous high was 33 by that 1954 team, Dave. <laughs> I won't say it. And and uh, I remember writing about that after that third <laughs> game. Uh, it's unbelievable, though. I mean – how after what you preached all summer discipline discipline, discipline, and, discipline. and and fundamentals what's more fundamental than than not jumping off sides or not having 12 men on the field like it's stupid simple little stuff that you can't have and it's not i mean it's something different every time it, there's been so many different penalties and somebody tweeted, you know, I, I tweeted out 35 penalties. Oh, Derek Barnett has 34. I guess two of them. And yeah. obviously they're both bad, but it's everybody. It's not just Derek Barnett. It's everybody. And it's inexcusable and it's coaching. I mean, it's, if there's one thing in a football game that reflects the coach, it's discipline and penalties and uh, sorry, Nick, but it's on you. It's on you. It means they're not prepared. It means they're not uh, they're not ready. They're, they haven't they they just haven't gotten ready for the game. If you're committing that many penalties, I don't know how else to say it. It's uh, it's awful. It, it reflects poorly on on the entire staff the, the way I see it. Yeah, I agree. And you're right. If it was like a couple guys doing it, it'd be one thing. It'd be easy to point your finger at it. When it's this many and this many different types of penalties. It just speaks to an overall lack of discipline that they can't have. I mean, this team is not good enough. Right. You know, Tampa Bay is good enough to get away with having 27 penalties through the first three games. Right. The Eagles are not. They're right. just not that good of a team. So you yeah. you can't compound that by being undisciplined. So it's it's troubling. They have to fix that. If they don't fix anything else, at least they fix that and and limit some of the self inflicted crap that's been bugging them. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's embarrassing. I mean, it's you know, and look, you know, you like to say, oh, it's a young team and all that. It's, they're not that young. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of these penalties are being committed by older players, veteran players. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, out of all the things to be disappointed about from this first three games, really, from the include the Atlanta game, and because they had fourteen penalties in that game. It's just they've had two games with 13 or more penalties. They're only the ninth team in history to do that twice the first three weeks of the season. I knew you're going to ask me that, so I had it prepared. Uh, but out of all the things that have gone wrong, I think the penalties is the is the most alarming because, yeah, you, you're just not going to win games like that. I mean, they they did beat Atlanta, but in the long haul, you're not going to win those games. You're just not going to give yourself a chance. And they're, you know, how many big plays have they lost because of penalties? bunch of them there they don't make that many to be with. at nissan we just made your choice for a new car an easier one than ever with our most exciting and fuel efficient lineup the choice is all yours now get great offers across our full line shop your local nissan store today and nissanusa.com Rube, we saw isaac samalu get carted off the field uh foot injury pretty immediately ruled out for the rest of the game doesn't look good for him, for him I, I, we don't know yet. We don't want to speculate, but this is the third offensive line injury in what a week and a day. Unbelievable! After last year and, and everything, you think that you know, this group's going to be together. Um, Jason Kelsey 
he, he broke down. He was really emotional in, in tears talking about it. He had to stop his press conference for 10, 12 seconds and, and compose himself. Um, you know, and he talked about just how he thinks Sam Malo has never really gotten the credit he deserves. Kelsey thinks the world of Sam Malo. And, you know, he, he, he just said he's so underrated. He's, he means so much to us. Now, Brandon Brooks will be back, you would think, at some point. We know that, I mean, Nick said Malata's not going on IR, so that tells you he'll be back either, you know, next week or the week after. Um, this week or the next the week after, whatever it is. Um, I would think Herbig would play left guard until Brooks gets back and then Dickerson would play left guard, I, I would think. Um, that would be the plan. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, assuming yeah. no. Brooks is back. At some point, they'll get Driscoll back off IR. Yeah, yeah, Driscoll back. We'll be back. He's eligible now, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you know we we kept saying you know if they if they stay healthy on both lines, and here they are, they missing four four linemen three weeks into the season. Um, I don't even know what to say. I you know it doesn't sound good, like you said when. When a guy gets carted off and the guy that plays next to him, who's seen everything in his 10-year career, he starts getting emotional. You know, it's pretty serious. So um, it just it just keeps happening. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's just I don't know how you I don't you know, and, and the whole the whole concept of the preseason was to avoid injuries, short practices, no nothing live, don't play the starters in the preseason games. You get to the starting line healthy. And then guys start falling down. Uh, I don't know what else he can do. It's nobody's fault. I mean, it, it just it's just football. Yeah, and it's it's going to be tough for them now. At, you know, at the end of this game, you had Andre Dillard, Nate Herbig, Jason Kelsey, Landon Dickerson, Lane Johnson. Dickerson had a rough go of it again. You know, it, it wasn't a good game. He he had Oso Odigizua in this game, who's a, a smaller quick rusher and he got the best of them a few times there was that one sack where i don't even think dickerson touched him yeah he he went right around him yeah uh it was it was not good i i don't you know it's like i really thought i mean look it's it's one and a half games he's played so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get too caught up in that um you know, he spent the whole offseason rehabbing. So he really hasn't practiced a whole lot. I mean, he's, he's practiced a handful of days. So we'll see what happens, but he's got to be better. You're a second round pick. I mean, you should be, be you should be playing better than he is. Uh, I don't care what the circumstances are. Uh, he's, he's not playing well. I, I expected more uh, off the bat. I didn't expect him to be an all pro off the bat, but I expected him to be pretty solid. And he hasn't been. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, now with, yeah, it's it's so funny. We talked all off season, not just about offensive line already. Down three starting offensive linemen, down their best edge rusher, and it, we said like they needed th- these two units. If if those two units stayed intact, they'd have a chance to to at least be a decent team. And here we are at going into to week four, and it doesn't look good. Yeah. And, you know, Kelsey is the best center in the league, but if he, if he has Herbig on his left and Dickerson on his right, he can't be the player that he is with Sam Malo on his left and Brooks on his right. So, you know, hopefully. And it also get, limits the play calling. Like sure. it limits what Nick Sirianni can do. Yeah, they might not run the ball as much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the screen game in particular, you're losing so much athleticism. Yeah. I mean, Sam Malo and Brooks. Are, are as good as any guards in the league about, you know, getting out in the second level on screenplays. And all of a sudden, not that Dickerson can't get there, but Herbig's not that guy, you know? Maybe Driscoll right. could be. Well, Herbig, you know, I mean, Herbig should be better at it. I mean, he is fitter than last year, and you know, but that's not his game. Dickerson and, and, should be able There's going to gonna be a drop-off. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, it's, it's a concern. Yeah. All right, let's get to uh, – Positivity corner. There was a lot of clamoring about it on on Twitter tonight. Uh, it's going to be a short one. I, there's not a lot of positives here. Um, we'll start off with Javon Hargrave. 
continues to dominate. I mean, he, he's really good, Rube. He is really, really good. Uh, it, he's their best player. Yeah, um, I think that's probably true. Um, I, he had two more sacks. He got four now. He had two hurries, a tackle for loss, six tackles. I mean, uh, yeah, he is he is head and shoulders above anybody on that defense. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin with who's the second best defensive player right now. I guess maybe Sweat. Uh, I don't even know. Who's their second best def- defensive player? They got one. No. Slay? Maybe. I think he's been average. I don't think he's been above that, but that might average might make him second best. Yeah. Average might make him second best. But Hargrave, um, he'll he'll go to a Pro Bowl for the first time. I'll be shocked if he doesn't. I mean, he he should hit double figures in sacks. He he might in October. <laughs> um, he's relentless and and he's playing the way Fletcher used to. Yeah, and Fletcher um, kind of gave us a little insight on he, – he was apparently pretty sick this week. He said he lost a bunch of weight. We saw him cramping at the end of the game. Oh, but even before then, he wasn't playing up to his normal level in these first two games. They really need him to to be at that Pro Bowl level, and if he's not, it's going to be a problem. Not sure he's that player anymore. He did score a touchdown, but it was – it was. I mean, he just basically – caught the ball but i'm sorry i'm sorry positivity corner positivity corner positivity oh, corner yeah. the All punter right. had a nice punt <laughs> he did it was a great punt it, it bounced right up in the air what five six yard line um hey i have one for you andre dillard i you know he he played okay and i i put in my observations my early observations before the game um i thought he would play okay and he did um yeah, he was he was he was the least of their problems. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything else for positivity corner? Um, well, Miles averaged 13 and a half. <laughs> yeah, so if he had if he had 20 carries, he would have had what 265 <laughs> yards. Yeah. That Quez um, Watkins catch was nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Very he's a really physical player. Like that was a really physical player. Yeah, you don't it think was. of a guy the, the speed guys usually aren't like physical, you know, but he's he's your best wide receiver. I mean, Devontae just hasn't gotten involved the last two weeks, which I think is partly him, partly Hurts, partly Nick. Um, but Quez is a, he's their playmaker. I thought Ertz, you know, he had a bad drop early, but um, I thought he kind of looked like his old self. Goddard had a couple big catches. He did, and he he, he you know, the one Jalen just you got to hit him. It was just yeah, it was it was one that Goddard. I don't want to say shit. he could have had it, but man, if that's a if that's a better thrown ball, that's a big game. It's like a thirty-five yard gain. There was no one there. Positi- posi- positivity, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. positivity. Um, Ertz, I think what did Ertz have four or five catches. Um, Ertz had four for fifty-three and a touchdown. Yeah, that's that's his best production in a couple of years. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he looked good. Um, Dillard, Ertz, Goddard. Oh, boy, I, I don't know if Hunter. I punter um i think oh and and hargrave i think um did kenny gainwell have a long he had a he had a 19 yard catch and run in garbage so there you go Um, yeah mac and cheese at AT at&t stadium still top notch yes top notch give them kudos all right that's gonna wrap up the positivity (laughs) corner uh we'll be back with you guys during the week for those of you crazy people who are up in the middle of the night listening to this we appreciate you guys uh please leave a, a comment rate subscribe wherever you get your podcast if you're watching on youtube please click the like button and subscribe there as well that's it for Ruben, i'm dave this has been eagle eye presented by nissan we'll talk to you soon